Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety. To all you sincere Akim, keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear or whether they forbear. All right. And um, this lesson is going to be entitled, uh, or some, well, I don't have a title for it exactly, but pretty much something to the effect of they hate the prophets. All right. Uh, the, the, the spirit of the prophet killers. All right. Is here, is back, and it's getting worse and worse. All right. You have more people that are rising up against the prophets of the Lord. All right, the men that you see out there on the highways and byways, and we're going to read some scriptures on why that is. But first, I'm going to go ahead and get this right quick. All right. This is Amos chapter 5 and verse 10. It says, They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh up rightly. Okay. So that spirit is has, has been in the earth. All right, it's nothing new. Um, and now as we get closer and closer to the end, we're getting ready to see it raise up, all right, more and more each and every single day, all right, but, you know, it's all part of the game, all right, Yahweh Shai told us of these things, so that when they come, all right, that we're not going to be caught off guard, so this is, um, let's see, this is Matthew, the 10th chapter, and let's see, okay, verse, I'll start at verse 7, it says, and as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received and freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. All right, so he's worthy of receiving what the Lord has for him. All right, the Lord is going to make sure you're taken care of. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, Inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. And whosoever shall, shall not receive you, nor hear your words when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. So don't even stress it. Right, we already know that this, this truth is not for the masses, all right? So just shake the dust off your feet. Keep it rolling. All right, verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they would deliver you up to the councils. They will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be hated. It's like ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake. For a testimony against them and the Gentiles. All right. But when they deliver you up, take no thought or how. Take no, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents. And cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Okay, it says, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, which is the prince of demons, how much more should they call them of his household? All right. And uh, this is the scripture I was thinking about when I was just doing camp uh, a couple hours back, midweek. Uh, it's a scripture I was trying to find. I couldn't find, but this is the one. All right. You know, um, once again, the spirit of the prophet killers is back. All right. And they, they hated Yahweh, uh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. They hated the son. And they're going to hate you, too. All right. And they're going to call you, uh, you know, evil, all sorts of things. All right. That's why it says on um, Luke, the sixth chapter, blessed is he when blessed is are you when all men revile you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. OK, 
Because that's exactly what they're going to do. All right, they, they, they say that we're preaching hate. All right, they slander. They accuse. All right, all these different things. Okay, they say that uh, the, the camps are demonic. All right, when we're doing nothing but reading from the Bible, reading the scriptures. Okay. And it's part of the game. and It's expected. All right. They called him the master of the house of Beelzebub. So how much more are they going to call they that are of his household? All right. Which is us. Lord's will. Okay. Why? Because ultimately, all right, these uh, these scriptures that we bring out, it, it cuts them. All right. They persecuted uh, Yahweh Shai and they're going to do the same to us. This is Acts chapter 5 and verse 30. Okay. It says, actually, matter of fact. I'm going to start at 28. Okay. This is actually a perfect example of it right here. Uh, Acts chapter 5, and I'm going to start at and verse um, 20, shoot, man. 25. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest and asked them, saying, Did we did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? All right. So pretty much they, they were uh, telling the disciples, you cannot teach in that name of Yahweh Shai. All right. The same way they're doing now. That's why you got. It's like you have a uh, dude paid off. All right. And what happens as soon as they get paid off? Now the name of the Lord ain't important no more. Now they calling on on JC. All right. As soon as they get that 501c3 charter, because they're bought and paid for it, they've made, they've made a, a, a covenant with the powers of this world, all right, with Esau, okay? It says, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to read that again, Acts 5 and 28, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us, all right? Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than men. The God of our fathers raised us up, Yahawashai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. All right. They the same. So they, 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 they uh, persecuted Yahawashai and got him crucified. All right, doing the same thing. They're going to try to do the same thing to us. It says, Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom the Most High hath given to them that obey him. It says, when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Okay? Because why? This, this, uh, this word, these scriptures is like a spiritual sword. So when, when, when wicked people hear it, all right, what happens to them? It cuts them to pieces, man. All right? This is Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Okay? This is the reason why they're constantly mocking, scoffing. You know, um, you know, we don't really pay them any attention, sending threats, all right, because they're cut, all right. And as we just read, it cut them to the heart, and they they sook, they sook, uh, they seeked out to slay the the disciples, all right. So that's what that's what the that's what the uh, the, the uh, wicked want to do, all right. They want to kill the righteous, and that's in the book. That's actually in the book of uh, I think Psalms. Let me get that right quick. I think it's Psalms, thirty fifth chapter. Boom, thirty seven. All right, Psalms chapter 37, verse 32. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Okay, so that's what that's what the uh, you know the wicked of our people, and then of course Esau, Edom seek to do. They want to, they want. That's why they're sen setting up, um, you know, uh, uh, false false prophets and stuff like that, and agents. All right, to try to get the ministry blamed, to try to make it seem like we are doing things that we're that that are we're not supposed to be doing. All right, pretty much. Okay, they're trying to they're trying to cast out our name as evil and accuse us. All right, that's and, and and that's a trick of Esau. All right, Esau has has set up um, and socially engineered our people. And when I say our people, I mean the Israelites to be wicked. All right, through through movies, through media, music. All right, and then what do they do? Then they turn around and say, "Look how wicked they are." All right, when they're the ones that are promoting all that stuff in our communities. But anyways, Hebrews four and twelve for the word of the Most High is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So when this word comes out, all the demons—that's that's that's the reason why it's because it's discerning them, it's cutting them down. 
All right, it's destroying us. It's cutting in between their soul and their spirit, the joints and the marrow, and it's it's exposing them. All right, when when the light comes in, it exposes the darkness. You see, all right, and that's why they cut. That's why they constantly, you know, mock and scoff and all these different things, and they're just exposing themselves. When the word comes out, all right, people with with dark spirits on them and demons, it it irritates their soul, so they have no choice but to try to try to uh, stop you, try to get in the way. All right, because they're coming in the spirit of their father, the spiritual demon Satan. All right. But it's it's a it's a, a quick and powerful sword. Okay, let's get this right quick. Jeremiah twenty three and twenty nine is not my word like as a fire saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. All right, and and Yahweh is the word incarnated. He's that Yahweh is that stone. Okay, that chief cornerstone, but also, all right, the stone of stumbling. Okay, let me try to get this right quick, and uh. It's a lot here. Okay, Matthew 21 and 44. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. All right, that's Yahweh Shai. Okay, that is Yahweh Shai. Whew. It's a lot here. I've been doing a lot today. Okay, but anyways, all right, that 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 word, all right, is like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Okay, it's it's you know it's fierce, man. This word is fierce. All right, let's get um this one right here, Jeremiah five and fourteen. Okay, wherefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, God of hosts, the power of hosts, Lord of armies, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this and this people would, and it shall devour them. So this word is like a burning fire, and it devours. It it, it slices like a sword. It's like a rock, all right, or a hammer that smashes the rocks. Okay, this this word is a weapon, all right. It's a weapon for righteousness against the wicked, all right. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, okay. All right, but but let's get that right quick. All right, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, okay? Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. All right? So a stronghold is like a uh let me see let's get the definition of it. All right. A stronghold doesn't really say Pretty much, let me let's just go to the blue letter. All right. So this this word is a weapon against the wicked. All right. To pull down their lies. All right. Let's get that word stronghold. Let's see. Wait, where scripture was I at? So like, you bear with me. Second uh, Corinthians ten and four. Okay. So let's see that word for stronghold. Let's see what it says. Strong G thirty seven ninety four. Akurama. Okurama, it seems like, and it says a stronghold is, let me see, a castle, stronghold, or fortress, anything on one which one, on which one relies. It says, of the arguments and reasonings by which a disputant endeavors to fortify his opinion and defend it against his opponent. Okay, so that's what they, this is what Esau uses to, to push his lies, that's, that's, and his lies are the stronghold. All right. But these weapons, which is the, the Bible, this weapon it cuts down lies. It cuts down the strongholds that Esau has on the minds of the people. Okay? It says, verse uh, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High, wayward doctrines and philosophies, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Most High, and having readiness, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay, so... Now, once our obedience is fulfilled, now we have a readiness to destroy false doctrine, all right, to revenge all disobedience, okay? And we use this word to do it, but, of course, it's a, it's a, sharp, it's a sharp sword, so it cuts people, all right? They don't like being corrected. They don't like being reproved, all right? They don't like rebuke, okay? But that's, uh, that's part of the scriptures, man, all right? And they get offended when we, when we bring out the truth, okay? But there's nothing they can do about it. They can't overcome it. This is Luke chapter 21 and verse 15 for I will give you 
a mouth of wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. All right, so they can't do anything against it. All right, you can you can't do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. Okay, that word gainsay it says to deny or contradict a fact or statement, so they cannot deny it. All right, they can't deny it and they can't resist it. That's the reason why. What do they do? They have to come up with slander campaigns. All right, you go and go and look at these these videos of these mockers and scoffers. All right, and 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 see even if they do do a video on us, they're never going to go into the doctrine. They're never going to go into the wisdom. That's coming out of our mouths. All right, what are they going to do? They're going to try to slander personal character. They're going to try to find fault. All right, they're going to try to discredit the, the teachers. All right, and why do they do that? Because, once again, the Lord has given us, and Lord's will we be that number, a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries, all right, two-thirds, Christians, Yah Israelites, all right, the religions of the world, atheists, whatever, all right, they shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist, and it pisses them off. They can't. They can't do anything about it. All right. Chapter, this is the book of Acts, chapter 6 and verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Okay. Because it all comes through the spirit. All right. The Lord is the one that is speaking through us. All right. When we're out there on the highways and byways, the Lord, we're the mouthpiece. We're the oracles of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. And, and because of that, they want to slay us. They seek to slay us. All right. And ultimately, this is the reason why right here, okay? This is the book of uh, St. John, chapter 3 and verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world. All right, what is this light? It's Yahweh Shai, all right? It says, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See? So they hate the light and they love the darkness because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. See, he, he don't want to be corrected. All right. So what do they do? They mock. They scoff. They try to discredit. Okay. Why? Because at the end of the day, they don't have the spirit on. All right. Okay. But it says, verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in the most high. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close out with that. All right. Once again, that spirit is raising up in the earth, man. All right, the spirit of the prophet killers. He hurt Israelites, bugged out, weirdos, two-thirds, Christians. All right, that spirit is heavy, man, because why? The, the, this is the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive, as spoken of in John, the 14th chapter. But it is what it is, man. We're going to keep pushing the gospel. They ain't stopping nothing over here. All right, all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, and Shalom. On to the next one.